Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for Big Brother 25 during week nine. And we actually had a week of Big Brother, which is crazy to ask for in this day and age, but here we are. And while the outcome wasn't exactly what I hoped for, it definitely could have been worse. And there's still some intrigue coming into this live show on Thursday night, but we'll get more into that in a moment. But with all out of the way, we have 11 players to talk about. And let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 11, we have the boot from this week. And here we have Jared, who had already been voted out almost two weeks ago now. But he finally went home after Cameron won the challenge. And I've already said quite a bit about Jared through my previous power rankings. And I'll have more to say about him on my power ranking that I'll do at the end of the season. So I'll try not to go on too long here. But uh, I can't really be overstated how massive of an advantage Jared had this season where he had all these things going for him to where he should have been in a spot to steamroll and even win at the end but he just actively messed it up for himself to where he ends up going home here and I think this week only further highlights just how much of his own fault it was to where literally like we're seeing Serene now getting back into a good position after Jared has left in a spot where she's literally losing her own son. So the fact that he messed up that badly to where Serene is now benefiting from all this, the fact that it would have been better for her game for him to leave, even though people don't know that he's her son, is pretty bad in my view. And I think it's pretty clear at this point that he's a pretty bad player and not a very likable person either. But with all these factors in play, he is now out of the game. And because of that, he is here at number 11. And with that, there are 10 players left in the game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how lucky I think they are to win based on their current game position. But at number 10, we do have the intended target for this week, although there still could be some time for things to change. And here we have Felicia. And if the plan goes through this week, which if I had to guess right now, it probably will, It'll be a shame to lose Felicia in the pre-jury. However, that's just how the cookie crumbled, where she did get a very unlucky HOH result with Cam winning. Although even then, it seemed like Matt and Jag probably also would have gone for Felicia first over Corey. So obviously that's not particularly great. And a lot of it was driven by this weird conception that Cam thought that Felicia was going to be the most bitter juror, which is funny considering that through Cam making this move, Felicia did really turn against Cam, ensuring that even if she somehow survives this week, even if Cam gets to the end, that there's no way that she's going to vote for him at that point. So it's sort of funny how that came, became a self-fulfilling prophecy. But at the same time, Felicia didn't play this week particularly well, where she obviously got pretty confrontational with Cam, like literally telling him that she knows that he's go she's going up and that it's probably a bad move. You also have her whole play during the veto meeting where she calls out Corey. And then afterwards, we know that she got into a fight with America. All oh, that's not particularly great. However, there's still actually a chance that she could stay this week, despite the fact that she made it pretty clear that she's going for Corey, where Corey and America have talked about wanting to keep her over Mimi, which is pretty insane when you think about it. And there's still a chance that the vote could flip to keep her. But still, I feel like she didn't play this week particularly well. She's still probably the most likely target to go home, though there's still time for things to change. But for now, I do have her here at number 10. Now we're moving on to number nine. And I originally, I didn't have this person this low. However, there is actually a chance it could go home this week. And here we have Mimi. And I feel like this has been a pretty bad week for Mimi, where she's obviously on the block against her closest ally, Felicia. So obviously, like if she stays, it comes at the cost of losing Felicia. And I feel like the way that she's played this week has been pretty passive to where I feel like had she taken more advantages and had she been more active, she could have potentially gotten out of the situation. And now even despite her being passive, there's a shot that she could go home this week. And I feel like she hasn't really done herself many favors to aid in her staying. Now, yes, like Felicia is still the intended target. But even if Felicia goes, like she's still going to be someone that will be considered as a backup target for next week and more than likely going to be a pawn again next week as well, which isn't great. I feel like Mimi has been losing control of the game in recent weeks, and I feel like she hasn't really been stepping it up to prevent that from happening. So I feel like because of that, coupled with the fact that she could go home on Thursday, I can't really have her any higher than number nine. Now we're moving on to number eight, and we have someone that has continued to be in the bottom half of these rankings, and here we have Cameron, 
who, as expected, won the duel and then won HOH, which by itself, like him winning HOH was pretty unnecessary. I feel like Matt and Jag winning would have been better for him, especially when they were going to consider similar targets to him in Felicia or Corey. And then he wins the veto as well, which is also insane. But despite him having all the power, he decides post veto to consider switching at the plan and backed on Corey, which would have been a massive mistake for his game as doing that would have enabled most of the house to turn against him, as people like Jag would have been turned against him. People like America would have been turned against him as well. And even Matt deliberately set up Can the Tribe to backdoor Corey so that this could happen. And on top of that, a lot of it was due to a bad read where he thought that Corey and Blue were working together, even though they were very clearly at odds. And he is eventually talked out of it by Corey, unintentionally, mind you, when Corey said that he'd be opening to target Blue in the future, but I feel like this week just further highlights Can's flaws in his game, where he acts overconfident, like he tends to act pretty erratically at points. He thinks he knows what's going on when he has very questionable reads at points. He's pretty misguided due to him targeting Felicia, thinking that she'll be a better juror. And in the way that he treats her, basically makes that a reality to where now if Felicia stays, she'll probably be bitter against her, him in the future. So I feel like that's pretty bad. And obviously the fact that he just wins competitions when he doesn't need to, like him winning the veto in a week where he already won HOH, it's just putting a bigger target on his back in the future. Now, yes, he's probably not going to be the next target by people like Matt or Jag, as he seemed more likely to go after Blue or Mimi next. However, he's still going to be a target by a decent chunk of the house not too far in the future, and I feel like he didn't really do anything to lower his threat over, over the course of the week. He still has no end game, basically, where he's going to have to win out if he wants any shot of winning. Though, to be fair, if he does manage to win all these comps, there is a chance he could be respected by a jury, but again, I feel like the way he's been playing the game has been pretty bad, and because of that, he is here at number 8. Now we're moving on to number 7, and we have another player that I've been pretty low on for a lot of the season, although for a lot of the week it seemed like they were playing okay, but it kind of just fell apart at the end, and here we have Blue. And I feel like you had to give Blue a bit of credit here for turning a lot of people against Corey to where Cam came very close to backdooring Corey and obviously taking him out of the game. However, due to things outside of her control, like obviously that resulted in him backing off. However, things have just kind of gone downhill for her since then, where people are trying to recognize that Blue's playing in the middle. Like Blue's being talked about by Matt, Jack, and Cam as a selfish player, someone that shouldn't have tried to target Corey in this spot. You have Corey figuring out from Cam that Blue is going after him. And obviously that's pretty bad as well. He's probably going to have his eyes on her moving forward. In general, like there's a decent amount of people that would target her next week. Matt in particular is someone that wants to target her given her connection with Sari. As Matt is someone that wants to work with Sari in the future and obviously taking out Blue would really help in that. So I feel like Blue is someone that has further highlighted that she's just not in a good spot. Now, again, I do have to give her some credit for trying to make a more active move. However, it was unsuccessful, and I feel like a lot of the fallout will eventually result in her being taken out. So I feel like for those reasons, I can't really have Blue too much higher than here, though I do have to at least acknowledge that she tried to play the game more actively. But for now, I do have her here at number seven. Now we're moving on to number six, and we have someone who I thought would have been going home this week, but they're not. And here we have Corey. And Corey started the opposite of Blue, where for a lot of the week, he's playing it pretty poorly. But at the last minute, he started to turn out to a degree to where he ends up being safe. But obviously, like the big story with him was his feud with Blue, where obviously like they were trying to go after each other. And then we get this really bizarre conversation between Corey and Blue, where Corey just decides to dump a lot of his information onto her without really like building anything solid. And sure enough, Blue ends up running a lot of this, this to Cam and in turn like making himself a bigger target. And then we get the whole thing post veto where Cam came very, very close to backdooring him. And Corey was pretty much unaware of all this. Like he had no idea how close he was to going home this week. And yes, while I do have to give him a bit of credit for like talking Cam out of it, I feel like a lot of it was kind of unintentional, like where a lot of the misunderstanding that led to Cam wanting to target Corey came from him thinking that Corey and Blue were working together, and it only took Corey telling Cam that he'd be open to targeting Blue if he had Matt and Jack's permission that caused Cam to talk out of it. 
You also have the fact that Jag was someone that was very much fighting in his corner as well, which I guess you had to give him a bit of credit for. But at the same time, like Corey wants to ja target Jag before Matt, who was very much advocating for the back door to go through. So I feel like a lot this week was pretty bad on Corey's end, where I feel like he was just like screwing up like socially to where he was causing people to want to target him. And while you can give him some credit for saving himself, I mean, I don't think he fully realized how much he needed to have those conversations with Cam in order to save himself. And I feel like moving forward, like he's still someone that could be targeted in the near future, particularly if someone like a Sri were to win HOH. But I feel like, again, now that the back door is kind of passed, I feel like there are other targets that are going to be ahead of him. People like a Cam, people like a Blue, even people like a Mimi potentially being targeted over him. But I feel like the way that he played this week is so bad that I couldn't really have many higher than number six. Now moving on to number five, and I did debate this one to a degree, but I decided to go with America. And there's definitely a debate for America being below Corey as it, again, sort of similar to Blue, it's become pretty clear that a lot of people just don't really respect her. There's been a lot of talk by people saying that she's not really playing the game. You have the fact that people just sort of see her as like someone that shouldn't be respected. And I feel like that'll really harm her if she gets to the end. However, the main reason I went with her above Corey is I feel like she's probably a bit safer in the game at this point compared to Corey, where Corey came very close to going home this week. And I feel like he played particularly poorly, not to say that America herself played well, but I feel like she at least like didn't make as many blatant mistakes as Corey. And plus, she wasn't as, in as much danger of going home compared to Corey. And obviously, moving forward, I feel like people probably just try to drag her deeper into the game, which is definitely like a boon to her long-term prospects but obviously not good in terms of her actually gaining respect so i feel like america is sort of hard to gauge at this point where on one hand she obviously has a bit more safety going forward than someone like a cory but is also less likely to win a jury vote at the end but with that said we're literally just about to start the jury there's still plenty of time for things to turn around to where i could see america going up on this list but I feel like with the way the things are playing out, I feel like I can't really have her above number five, though we'll see what happens going forward. Now we're moving on to number four and we have someone kind of similar to America, though I feel like they are seen a bit more positively within the game. And here we have Bowie Jane. And again, I feel like Bowie Jane, sort of similar to America, is probably a bit safer in the game where people like a Matt and a Jag want to take her very deep into the game where she is being included like in their final five plans and even beyond possibly. I feel like Bowie is someone that's pretty safe within the game. I feel like she's someone that has decent relationships with the other players in the house. Now admittedly sort of similar to America. I find it hard to see how she wins a jury vote right now where even though I said a couple weeks ago that her jury prospects were increasing she's still like been like pretty passive where like she hasn't really talked much game and I feel like she hasn't really elevated it to the same degree as certain other players. But again, I feel like there's still time for things to turn around and I would actually have more faith in a Bowie to increase her win equity through like these last 40 days that we have left in the game to where she could win by the end. So I feel like that was enough to give her the edge over Bowie. Plus, I feel like she didn't make as many mistakes. I feel like this week in general was not as bad for her as America or Corey, obviously. But I feel like I can't really have her in the top three, which is why I do have her here at number four. Now I'm moving on to number three. And I feel like these top three are pretty definitive. I feel like these are all people that could win the game and potentially be in a dominant position moving forward. And it's just a matter of ordering them. But number three, I actually have the person that I have the most worries about in terms of them getting to the end. And here we have Jag. And obviously the big story with Jag this week is that he was probably one of the biggest advocates for Cam not going through with a backdoor as he was right. He recognized that keeping Corey in the game is probably better for them in terms of ensuring that the rest of the house doesn't get mad and turn against Cam. But obviously having this distraction of Corey and Blue targeting each other and obviously Jag is someone that has an okay relationship with Corey, though at the same time, Corey wants to target him first before Matt, which is pretty insane when you think about it. But I also feel like the fact that Jag got his way is pretty good for his game. The fact that he was able to talk Cam out of this is pretty good. And again, I feel like he's probably one of the bigger competitors left on the board, where a lot of the talk online has been about how it's him or Matt that are going to win the next HOH and are probably going to win a decent chunk of the competitions moving forward, especially once Cam goes out, which seems increasingly likely. 
So I feel like for that reason, I feel like Jag is going to be in a pretty solid position moving forward. Definitely a much better position than he was earlier in the game. But at the same time, I feel like there are still plenty of people that would target him relatively soon. And between him and Matt, I feel like that's probably going to lead to him being targeted first, which I don't love that position. Plus, I feel like the fact that he wants to go to the end with Matt is another worry, as I feel like Matt would probably beat him at the end. So I think those are definitely big flags that hold me back from putting him much higher in the list but i feel like compared to everyone else i feel like he is someone that played this week pretty well and i feel like he'll be in a solid spot moving forward though to be fair some of that's due to his comp ability but it's for that reason that i have him here at number three now we're moving on to number two and it's the same top two that i had last week believe it or not it's just a matter of warning them but number two i did decide to go with sari and again, it's crazy how much Sari has really recovered from this bad spot that she was in. And considering like how bad of a player Jared is, it's sort of crazy to think that Jared leaving actually benefited her game to where she's been able to like fly a bit under the radar, like allow Cam and company to really take the front seat. All while there are still plenty of people that want to work with her moving forward. I mean, people like Mimi want to work with her. Blue wants to work with her. Even Matt wants to work with her moving forward and take her very deep into the game. I feel like her position has really been booned by this. And it's at this point that no one's really targeting her and she'll probably get towards the end of the game. Sort of similar to what we had from her a couple weeks ago. So it's really insane seeing just how much she recovered considering the circumstances. However, that same worry persists where it's unclear like if she can actually get to the very end especially like with Matt and Jag being these big competitors, it's going to be hard to see how she actually wins that final HOH, which she'll probably need. Though to be fair, I mean, considering how close of a relationship Matt has with her, there is a world where maybe Matt could be talked into taking her to the end, though it's unclear for now, like what that'll be. I am still under the assumption that she'll need to actually win it herself, which again is probably going to be a bit hairy. But considering everyone else, I feel like the fact that she has played pretty well this week leaves her here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Big Brother 25 right now is Matt. Now, there is a bit of a knock here in the sense that Matt technically didn't get his way this week where he obviously wanted to get Cam to backdoor Corey as he recognized that doing so would free up the rest of the house to target Cam the following week. So I feel like that's something to consider. And it's actually interesting seeing how Matt maneuvers all this. Though at the same time, like Matt doesn't really fight that hard to get his way. Like he really just plays the middle during a lot of the fighting between Cam and Jag. And obviously Jag is eventually able to convince Matt to back down from this plan, which isn't great as it now presents a possibility where people could find out that Matt wanted Corey gone, which could like ruin that relationship. And you also have the fact that he wants to take Suri very deep into the game, someone that could beat him at the end if like he gets too far, but at the same time, like he is much better in competitions than Suri. And I feel like that's another thing bo boosting up him up is the fact that in addition to his solid relationships, he's also someone that is very capable of winning comps. And given the rest of the field, like it's very possible that him and Jack could just win out from this point. And obviously in that spot, I feel like I have more confidence in Matt to win out at the end versus Jag. So I feel like sort of similar to last week, I feel like Matt is still probably in the best position to win the game overall, both in terms of getting to the end and having the respect at the end to win. I feel like that hasn't really changed as much, though obviously there was a bit of a wrinkle this week with the whole Corey stuff, but I feel like he'll probably recover fine from it, which is why he is here at number one. And there we go, that will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe, really helps with the channel. And I'll be back again next week to update the Power on Kings again, so stay tuned for that. Survivor 45 is now in full swing, so you can expect weekly Power on Kings of that, as well as the Amazing Race, so stay tuned for that as well. I am now on Patreon, so if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And if you haven't already, you can join the Discord server as well by clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.